What's this? Unknown transforming robot. It's probably shit, but if I just been a quid, it really won't matter. <laughs> New toy joy. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Ray, big hair, green t-shirt here, back for another Transformer Transformation review thingy. And what's good is the wait is finally over. So, <clears throat> I went into, they're kind of everywhere now, you know what I mean. So I went into Toys R Us, and I went into, the Smiths have them, yes, the Entertainer, the Entertainer will probably get them in at the end of the year, you know what they're like. And I was delighted. So, I, Wave 2 and Wave 1 all together of the Deluxes, which I was delighted about. So I only got four, because um, some of them don't really appeal as yet. Bumblebee, well, Wheeljack's okay. So smokescreen, because they've never had a smokescreen. And uh, Brad, uh, just an XLA on XLR. Just in case you're wondering, the... Uh, <clears throat> does come off. And of course, little bulkhead, because he's so characterful. We've never had him this size and this class. And... Wonderful little thing. He looks like a mouldy vegetable, but I think he's great. And the very lovely and the very delicious laser bike. I was always going to get the dragons and the monsters, just because that's the sexiest thing that happens in Transformers for me. This guy's nice. Good weight. Simple transformation. Uh, doesn't tick every single box. Has a few little cons, but it's a big red dragon, you know? And then the one I was so excited about... And then the one that really excited me is Ripclaw. I didn't expect to see her at all, because um, she's from Wave 2. Beautiful, insanely beautiful dragon. And uh, really nice bot. And again, good weight, nice plastic, everything. All these boxes are being ticked here as far as this, these guys goes. Beast Hunters anyway. So I passed on uh, Bumblebee, of course. Passed on Soundwave, but I'll get it eventually. It's just a reader co, isn't it? So I got, well, I know he's retooled. I got all the new molds anyway. I uh, passed on Soundwave, passed on Wheeljack, and I, well, passed on Starscream. Um, but I will get Starscream. And I passed on Prime. Because I was always going to pass on Prime. Um, but they're here. The wait is finally over. The weather is beautiful. Auto Assembly is nearly here. I've got big hair. What am I doing today? Oh, yes. So this is uh, Mega Dinobot from Energon, of course. And there's so many, there's so much about this guy, the, rather the two of them, because it's the... Dinosaur Combiner. Uh, there's so many things about this guy that just make him really, really stand out. Love him or hate him. Well, <clears throat> he's easy, very easy to love, but very, very difficult to hate. Quite easy to dislike, if you know what I mean. Um, I suppose I first heard about him about three or four years ago, maybe. And this is when I was still relatively new to Transformers, I suppose. So I think this is... This Christmas will be my ninth year. Christmas of this year will be my ninth year, I think, of collecting Transformers. And I was bowled over by the by the images of them. Wasn't bowled over by the reviews, because some people really, really loved it. Some people really hated it. And now here's an interesting factoid that I learned today. I didn't know, of course. TF Wiki, uh, or Chris McFeely, as I call it. Um, this set was not engineered by Takara employees a rarity for normal series transformers toys now that's just a little interesting little thing and so was it it was it hasbro then well it, i suppose if it wasn't the car it was by extension had to be hasbro unless it was someone else okay all right okay fair enough I suppose they made all the energy on toys i don't know how it worked i would quite like a uh, a detailed bio of kind of the mechanical and design processes of these things where a particular bot was designed. Is it a Takara designed or is it Hasbro designed? Or I'd love to know the stuff about that because that's the stuff that's really, really lacking for me. Uh, the character bios and all, I can kind of, you know, take or leave. But that kind of stuff really, really interests me. Let me see if there's anything else. I'm going to give you a little bit of BG, of course, not, not to do you any harm. Uh, Mighty Grimlock has been, has had a few extra peeps a few extra subscribers which i'm absolutely delighted about because he's fantastic he really is i he's one of those guys that i will definitely routinely watch and uh bumble jumper as well ed has uh well i don't i don't think uh, my plug in you has had had any effect on your your subscribers at all oh well i don't think you need it anymore 
but they're both coming to the auto assembly, which is cool. Mega Dinobot is another bot from the Inner John proportion, proportion, interesting, of the Unicron Trilogy continuity family. It is the combined form of the Heavy Assault, Autobots, Grimlock, and Swoop, though the two greatly enjoy splitting off to confuse and crush the Decepticons. Mega Dinobot is perfect for taking out anyone who managed to survive the initial onslaught. Now, look at this boy. He's actually, he's probably as heavy as he looks, if you get my meaning. This is the swoop, of course. Um, you could say almost modelled after the original swoop. And I have the original swoop over there. I suppose I'll just go and get him so you can have a look. Now this, of course, is Generation 1 swoop. And he is the Transformer you least want to drop. Because he's like a glass bottle. He'll absolutely shatter. This one's in pretty good condition. Looks in pretty good condition. Apart from the fact that this area had bro has broken off previously. And I've attempted to glue it back, but I don't like transforming this guy. So, note, we have a tech, yes, that's the right word, um, Tyrannodon. What is that called exactly? And he's got this kind of backpacky thing going on. And again, we have a tech Tyrannodon, and we have the backpack. So, it's a definite, definite homage. Without the original swoop, this guy would have looked so much different. Fairly poseable ish the neck, the head will go up and down, and he, of course he must have his little beak open and closing thing. The legs, well, there's a problem with the legs, and it, there's no real, where do you stop? Where's where's the stopping point here? Is it is it is it there, or, or is it there? I'm not really sure what it is. Um, it could be that, but I'm not convinced that that looks better than that. I think that looks a little better. So, there is a lot of movement. And there is a lot of movement in the legs, um, both at the hip and, I suppose, a knee, to be fair. The wings are going to do lots and lots of wonderful things. There's really plenty of movement in these wings, and he looks absolutely fantastic. Uh, getting him to his robot mode couldn't be simpler, and there's a nice bit of this ratchet going on. Actually, I say a nice bit. Where is it? Oh, it's very, it's a very light ratchet -y sound. Ah, it feels, feels like it's going to be a louder... Ratchet, uh, it's pretty decent. Now these, which were his feet, are going to become his arms, quite obviously. And I like the fact that he has, uh, he's got two giant fingers and one thumb. Uh, and that's going to be like that, that's it. Nice, easy little transformation. Uh, plenty of posability. So the good thing about this guy is his wings are super posable. There's lots going on here, uh, re-wings. So you can have all kinds of uh, uh, iterations of, of his wings. Look at that. That one's pretty good. Uh, you can do this kind of thing. That one's pretty good. You could spend a lot of time doing that if you want. He's got his little Pteranodon sail here. It's alluded to, interestingly, in the robot mode, but not in the dino mode. Let me just tidy that up, give him his proper shoulders, these little shoulder pad things, like that. And there he is. There's nothing here that kind of pegs and stays properly. So a lot of it, I mean, a lot, he's going to move out of place very, very easily. And it's very easy to make him look un um, not like an action, action figure. But he is a really nice bot. Because uh, the alt mode is very, very interesting. And this bot also is interesting despite its many flaws. But I often think that it is, it is flaws like this that really make a bot interesting for me. Right, let's get on to Grimlock and then I'll combine the bad boys. So, of course, this is the wonderful Generation 1 Grimlock. Iconic mech, uh, T-Rex, Autobot, and every other Grimlock since has has been almost identical it's just been updated and uh altered to fit the aesthetic of the particular continuity apart from r.i.d grimlock who's a green crane i don't know go figure but this guy you can see well you can just about see pays massive homage to generation one grimlock uh insofar as the transformation is almost identical as well but it's like all grimlocks we've ever had apart from that r.i.d one all Grimlocks that are T-Rex seem to have the same transformation. They've all got the tail split and the, the T-Rex head goes back. Very, very cool. Now, this guy is perhaps not quite as heavy as Swoop, 
but he's still he's got lots of character he really is full of character we've got the mouth opening and closing of course and a nice nice bit of head bobbing now what i'm going to do because it is my want of late i'm picking out those panel lines there with a really nice bit of black paint and I will, I'm going to do that tutorial sometimes. I hardly, hardly need to do it because there are so many other tutorials online. But uh, may, maybe I will just uh, for the people because I, I, I get asked four times a week. Not that many, but you know what I mean. Lots of movement. You've got a lovely big Autobot symbol there. But the problem is, this is the, why this guy's lighter than Swoop. Is he suffers from that awful fall of Cybertron. No, you know, the Generations Grimlock symptoms there. He's got that big cavity. It's a funny, he was, you know, he was rather potentious, letting us know that one day a Grimlock would come that would have a similar jank in the cavity. You could store sweets in there. It's massive. I do like that Generations Grimlock. I haven't got it yet, but I will get it. I will get it eventually. I know that I just don't want to be disappointed. That's the thing. I think when I get the auto assembly, I'll get it. Then I'll probably, I have other bots to keep me interested while enduring the disappointment of that guy but i do like this now watch the transformation you'll see what happens first yeah with every grimlock ever and a nice ratchet here if i remember yeah that's what i call a ratchet sweet very nice and next thing you open up these little panels at the back and what happens next it wouldn't be grimlock if this didn't happen all the way that's a bit of back cable there isn't it that is some backpack and you can just about see here these arms will go up about half an inch either side and again wouldn't be Grimlock if the fists if the robot fists weren't in the rear legs of the T-Rex now I've got to give you a little close-up on his face because he is Grimlock Grimlock-esque he looks like a cross between I don't know, he looks a bit like the war within Grimlock too, now that I think about it. You can just about see it there. He's dying to split open there. He really is. Now, the good thing about this guy and Swoop, they didn't come with any accessories, which I'm pleased about because I cannot be bothered with accessories. I don't really need them in my life. I have quite enough, thank you very much. Uh, how does he compare with Swoop? Let's see. <coughs> I think Swoop's a little taller. Yeah, oh, actually, he's considerably taller, isn't he? Now, what happens next is there's a wonderful thing. Both these guys combine to make the ludicrous, the absolutely absurdly wonderful Mega Dinobot. Uh, I'll just show you. And there he is. A massive, gangly, floppy, misproportioned, but wonderfully ridiculous Mega Dinobot. Have a look at his face. That is a definite uh, war within, yeah, Grimlock face. Um, he's got this odd little thing. We'll have to point this out first of all. This odd thing with his legs, where you can give him, you can make his legs seem larger. You know, you can divide them and make the increase the lengths of the legs. But unfortunately, they're so floppy and they won't. He won't stand in that mode. So you've got to put the two things together. You've got to do that. And when you do that, it makes him look completely and utterly ridiculous, like he needs the loo. And you can't do anything about Swoop's arms here. There is nothing to be done. There is nothing to be done. So the best thing to do, I think, is to try and capitalize on the fact that they're there and uh, pull them off. No, and uh, just give him, just give him an extra set of arms, uh, rather like. You know, that you can get some really interesting kibble things going on, like you do with a lot of the spiders. So, this is an option, which is, it's alright. Uh, <laughs> so, he has four arms. But again, he's got the, he's got the leg problem completely there. Uh, he looks better like that. Yeah, he does. He looks better like that. But he won't stand. So, in order to make him stand, you've got to give him his, I need to pee mode. Uh... There is a problem with his arms in that they, uh, this, uh, this thing is really, really in my uh, line of sight. And I can't unsee it. Once it's there, I just can't unsee it. There's an awful lot going on at the back. But there's some really ingenious little 
a bit of uh, a transformation that you've got to do in order to get both of these guys to combine. For example, Swoop has uh, two little kind of uh, fingers on the end of each of his wings that have to uh, click on to these parts of Grimlock's tail. But you see, as a combiner, it doesn't really work. But it is, but it is a very interesting experiment, a really interesting experiment. Again, one of the pros of this guy is that there are no accessories. I can't stress how happy that makes me that he doesn't have accessories. But as a bot, as a as a duo combiner bot, it doesn't entirely work. It doesn't tick all the boxes. But like I say, it's all these terrible flaws that make this guy so interesting. It make him so so attractive in a, a slightly freakish kind of way. I definitely, yeah, why not go the whole hog, give him some extra arms. Yeah, get out Grimlock's arms there. There you go. Now that's what we're talking there. Hey, in for a penny, in for a pound. That's much better. Look, he has all the arms, this chap here. That's what we're looking for. So if you don't have this guy, and if you're a big fan of bots, um, if you're a big fan of bots like me, then you must have a look out for this guy. You can pick him up. Got it. If you get him for 25 quid, you've got an absolute bargain. You really do. If you're going to the auto assembly this year, this is one of the guys that you really must have a look for if you don't have him. Because he is so quirky. He's quirky as all get out. He's absolutely dreadful and wonderful all at the same time. Beautiful little thing. Absolutely ridiculous. This is Ray. Big hair, green t-shirt, and mega dinobot signing out. I'm off now to pick out some panel lines on dragons. Oh, yes. Now that's what 